Well, welcome back to a special, special programme today on Haters TV. We're here in the bowels of Wembley Stadium on the eve of the start of the new Premier League season. Not long to wait now with a very special guest. We like to say one of our own, the one and only David Ornsey. And the reason I say one of our own, because David briefly was here, not on our youth training system, but doing a bit of work experience at the start of his career. We really, really wanted to sign you, David. <laughs> but you had offers from other clubs, I think at the BBC, the Guardian, and you were looking at options. And it reminds me a bit like... You know, the original one of our own Harry Kane, the situation now. <laughs> Sorry to brief, to jump straight in here, but I mean, <laughs> nice to see you again. Uh, Likewise. If you want to be one of our own, you're always welcome to come back and sign again. Harry Kane, he's one of our own, one of Tottenham's own. Is he staying? Is he going? What's going on with that? Well, I've certainly never been compared to Harry Kane, apart from uh, some of my goal-scoring exploits in five-a-side football back in the day, possibly. Um <sighs> That's the question that Daniel Levy needs to answer because um, he hasn't so far uh, Bayern Munich are pushing increasingly hard to sign Harry Kane and um, clearly Kane would be open to the possibility. Uh, I don't think that's in doubt now. The question is how long do Bayern Munich wait and what ultimately will, will Daniel Levy say? So Bayern Munich seem to have set this deadline and ultimatum that will not have gone down well with Daniel Levy. He's probably the last person you should do that to. Um, uh, people in negotiations don't like to be backed into a corner um, and told what they should or shouldn't do, especially when this is the person in control of Harry Kane's future for 12 more months, at least. Um, and you could say that you know it's a massive gamble and risk of Daniel Levy to let this money slip by the wayside and hold on to Kane in the hope that he'll sign a new contract in his final year because he could easily walk out for free to wherever he wants in the summer of 2024 and or agree a pre-contract agreement with an overseas club from January 2024. Um, the indications are that he does not want to sign a new contract with Spurs, but equally the soundings are that he really is impressed by Ange Postacoglu and has enjoyed training. He's got his friend and England teammate James Madison there now. And you never know. Harry Kane has always wanted to succeed with Tottenham. Um, if there's signs of an upturn and the trajectory is positive and they're challenging for Champions League qualification, maybe even trophies next season, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that he does extend his stay at Spurs. Um, but I don't think we're encountering that conversation just yet. I think this is all what's going to happen with Bayern Munich. And Daniel Levy seemingly has not had his asking price met. Now, Bayern Munich might be forlorn with that. They might be aghast. You know, a player who's only got one season, nine months, essentially, of football into that last 12 months of contract to go. They've pushed to what? reportedly 80, 85 million pounds, 100 million euros package, maybe even higher with some bonuses. Um, certainly, uh, Daniel Levy wanted more. It was 25 million pounds short of, of what he wanted at one point. Um, Bayern seemingly saying, take it or leave it. Um, this is our best and final offer. But the suggestions are that that has not been responded to by Daniel Levy, and he's he's flown away to to America uh, for some downtime. You know, he'll always be across his work and he can still and will still be involved with things. Um, but he'll decide when he wants to and then it's up to Bayern Munich if they're still at the table. I suspect when they've come this far that in their heart of hearts, they're not going to walk away. And although Harry Kane seemingly wanted his future solved, resolved before the season started and if he started the season at Spurs, the word was he's not going to leave after that. If the clubs end up coming to an agreement, then it's going to be a big question for him to answer. And I would suggest the door is not fully closed on anyone's part at this point. So I've done a brilliant job of sitting on the fence there for you, Nick. Um, I think there's clearly still a very good chance that, that this happens. However, as the days tick by and as we speak here now, Harry Kane has started for Tottenham in a friendly against Shakhtar as captain. And that, you sense, may decrease the likelihood of him mm. going the more and more attached he becomes to this new team that Ange Postacoglu is building um, but we've seen enough in football never say never you get messages uh, when these stories come out that ultimatums have been set Daniel Levy hasn't responded to suggest 
31st of August, that's when he finally relents. He gets all his business done before so that prices can't be hiked up. Um, and then finally he, he sanctions his sale and then it's up to Harry Kane whether he stays or goes. So not giving you a firm answer. Well, Levy fended off Manchester City, didn't he, before quite successfully and, and Kane stayed. Is it a fact, can a Premier League club such as Tottenham afford not to sell Kane? Can they afford to say goodbye to 80, 90, 100 million pounds and still be fine in the long term well there's the, the literal and the notional sense literally if their finances can survive and they've got their stadium revenues and and whatnot then then yeah they can uh, get by without the whatever it might be uh, 100 million euros f give or take um uh, but they'll also be looking at at it in the in the sort of notional sense of what value does harry kane bring to us for his final year if he helps us qualify for a top four finish, Champions League football, maybe they get a trophy, um, then what price do you put on that? Um, the goals that he will contribute, uh, maybe it is. We're seeing that increasingly in football, and Arsene Wenger once talked about this, or, or more than once, that um, clubs place, place a greater value on that final 12 months than they do on the potential transfer fee and the riches that come with qualifying for the Champions League, for example, and the associated uplift from sponsorships and um, new partners and things by doing well over the course of a season. Uh, how does uh, somebody like Daniel Levy replace Harry Kane's goals if he's to go? You could sign a, a striker for €80 million Euros or pounds now that contributes 10 goals a season you know you see the figure that Rasmus Hoyland has mm. gone to Manchester United for like, I think he's going to have a great career but his goal scoring record doesn't blow you away so far and so the striker market is already um, there's a deficit in supply and demand there are many more uh, strikers being sought than there are available in the market and so you know, Tottenham do have Richarlison there. He's Brazil's number nine. They could bring in some supplementary players. They've got a young boy from Argentina coming in, although that's a project. They've got James Madison. Uh, others may come in in the meantime, and, and they can spend uh, reg maybe regardless of whether Harry Kane stays or leaves. But, you know, he's been at Tottenham for what? Since the age of nine. He's scored. He's their club record goal scorer. He, he's the hero. It's big big decision for Daniel Levy and he's not going to be railroaded into it by deadlines or ultimatums um and so you know can they afford um to not sell him maybe Daniel Levy thinks they can mm -hmm. most of us think take the money you know it's crazy not to back yourself to rebuild and and give Ange Postacoglu the chance to maybe do his work with a bit less pressure if Harry Kane goes, everybody, most people will understand it's a period of transition. Um, and, you know, the scrutiny will always be there, but perhaps it's a bit, bit less sharp in Harry Kane's absence. Whereas if Harry Kane stays, you not only haven't taken the money, but you, you presumably need to go and win something or at least finish in the top four and, and show real signs of progress. So um, another fence-sitting answer. Can... Daniel Levy afford not to sell him? Uh, I think he probably can, but that doesn't mean we're not allowed opinions on what he should do. And I think if it gets to a reasonable price for him now, maybe the sale would be the most sensible thing for all parties. But I do think this story has a, a few legs left to run. Well, that'll keep everyone interested in following you on <laughs> at The Athletic and on your Twitter feed and so on, I'm sure. Because you must be relentlessly on at the moment, aren't you? Must be. I probably don't get much sleep. But it's funny you should say there's a dearth of strikers because I think mm. so you were talking about your five aside when we're playing as kids in the playground. We always want to score goals. We want to be strikers. Mm. If you just look at football around the world, there are so few. I mean, Arsenal are struggling. We're here, at, you know, at Wembley with Arsenal and Manchester City about to play. Manchester City have Erling Haaland. They were quite happy without a striker before Haaland became available. Arsenal have got Gabriel Jesus injured and seem to be willing to let. Balogun go. What can you tell us about the Arsenal situation and their search for a striker if there even is one or are they more like to sell rather than recruit? It is a fascinating environment, the striker market. Um, you've got Bayern Munich needing one, whether it be Harry Kane or somebody else like Kolo Mouani. Um, you've got PSG in the market for one because 
who knows what's happening with Kylian Mbappe. Kola Moani comes into that sort of conversation too. They quite like Harry Kane, but Harry Kane's preference this summer um, would be only to go to Bayern Munich if he's to leave. I don't think he wants to go to PSG this summer or, or anywhere else. Um, uh, you know, what happens at Real Madrid, for example, post Karim Benzema? Um, do they get Mbappe this summer? Do they get a stopgap? Do they get him in the summer of 2024? Um, the fact that Manchester United paid so much for a prospect in Rasmus Hoyland um, illustrated that sort of dearth of available options. Uh, then it brings us on to Arsenal. So they, they were not, to our knowledge, in the market for a striker. They obviously had Gabriel Jesus, Eddie and Ketia. Um, Balogun, the expectation is that he will leave, but it's not done yet. So let's see what happens. Um, and they've got auxiliary options like Leandro Trossard, like Kai Havertz, who was brought in as a sort of with the idea of being a left-sided eight. But he can, of course, play in different positions, wide and up top too, if needed. Um, and then, as you, you quite rightly point out, Pep Guardiola sort of pioneered at Barcelona, then Man City, this false nine option where you don't really play a recognised striker. I remember Mikel Arteta trying that to a pretty uh, unsuccessful um, outcome at Villarreal away in the Europa League mm -hmm. semi-final a few years ago. Um, it's, a, it's a really tricky situation. I, I'm not aware of Arsenal trying to sign a striker at this moment. I think their focus right now is trying to complete this deal for David Rea um, at Brentford and with Matt Turner going to Nottingham Forest. Um, I think that will get done. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, it, by the time this goes out, maybe it has already changed and developed. My expectation right now is that they're going to move towards an agreement with Brentford for David Rea. Um, uh, they were a bit short of where they needed to be with their initial offer. Brentford, prior to sort of Arsenal stepping forward, were quite clear in wanting, what, £40 million. Pounds. Arsenal would want to go far lower than that and maybe they'll meet somewhere in the middle. Um, but it's a move that both clubs want to make happen. So you sense then a compromise will be found. It probably depends on Matt Turner exiting and Nottingham Forest um, being... Uh, the club that wants to take him and closing in on that deal. So, yeah, I expect that whole situation to have uh, resolved itself um, probably start of the week. Mm. Um, and then Arsenal can move on to other considerations. Um, not aware of a striker. I mean, y you start to think to yourself off the top of your head, if um, Gabriel Jesus is only out for a few weeks, do you just get by with what you had? If if he's going to be out for any longer, which we, we're not aware of, um, but the knee is always unpredictable and he's had knee issues previously, do they look to sort of temporary option alone? Or again, not saying this is information, I'm just hy hypothesizing um, rather than going out and buying someone because you then have a problem when Gabriel Jesus comes back to fitness. Gabriel Jesus himself hasn't been a prolific goal scorer right. for Arsenal, which again shows the difficulty of that position. And, you know, expectations change at Arsenal this season. Last season was almost like a bonus. They did better than expected and ma managed to get back into the Champions League. But, you know, the fans will, will want to see goals. Arsenal will need to score goals. And, and they'll hope that you get contribution from all areas. Bakayo Saka, for example, Emile Smith-Rowe being fit and prior to his injury problems was, was scoring goals. Uh, maybe more from midfield too. Um, but it is an interesting position. Right at the start of the summer, or even coming into it, you wondered if the the extra attacking uh, position after uh, the attacking midfield one, they were looking at Mason Mount and others, ended up being Kai Havertz. The more defensive-minded midfield position ended up being Declan Rice. Y you were wondering, would they go for some backup to Bakayo Saka? Because maybe they were a bit slim in that position. They've got, obviously... Uh, Gabriel Martinelli and Emil Smith Rowe on the other side, but if Saka was to get injured, what do you put there? There's, you know, Reese Nelson, Fabio Vieira, but they're not quite players who have played in that position before. Um, and so maybe, maybe there is scope for one more attacking option. They did look at João Felix, if you remember last year as a loan option before he went to Chelsea. Um, doesn't seem particularly settled or, or a happy situation at Atletico Madrid and numerous clubs being linked with him. So no doubt, Arsenal, like all clubs, are surveying the market for the options. Um, and they'll see how uh, serious the Jesus problem is. 
uh, whether they can cope in the meantime or whether they need to do something. Also, the evidence of the opening matches of the season. Like we're preempting things that we don't even know yet. Maybe they'll do really well and, and they'll be able to get by and then Jesus comes back. Maybe they do quite badly and they have to make a quick decision to step something up. They'll have their recruitment lists like every club. They'll have their options. Arsenal have been really impressive in the market in recent times with Edu and Arteta and their recruitment operation. Um, they've done some surprise work. They've managed to uh, pull off some pretty successful deals. And so I, I'd back them to cope in this situation. And, and the Cronkies seem to be backing them in the market with money and, and, and with support and with freedom to... Uh, make bold decisions pretty much since they took full ownership of the club in the summer of 2018 I think um, and so we've got no reason to believe that they won't finish the window in the shape that they want to be.